Welcome to this video review of the GCSE Edexcel Maths exam paper free that has just taken place. But before we do that, we want to do something for you guys. I think we need to recognize, and that is we salute you, Year 11. Salute. The last two years have been so difficult. Yes, it has been. Yeah, and I know that learning hasn't been easy. Schools have been in lockdown. You know, your motivation for learning hasn't been there as it, as it has been with previous years. But we've got here. We are finally here. We have done the free exams that you need to do. And, you know, we can look forward to it, whatever happens. Okay, whatever has happened has happened. And a lot of you have been putting in lots and lots of hard work over the last uh, few weeks. And we wish you all the best. But to get here, to get to this point, you know, you have done really, really well, fantastically well. Okay, so we salute you for that once again. We salute you guys. Yeah, well done, everyone. Right, so in this video, uh, we are going to firstly look at the paper free, how difficult it was. Obviously, we won't be giving out solutions um, simply because, uh, you know, lots of schools want to be using parts of this paper for their mock exams in the future. So we want to be careful uh, of not giving out uh, solutions to questions exactly, but we'll talk about the difficulty of the paper. Then we're going to look at the grade boundaries. Um, and then finally, we can look at AS mathematics. You know, some, lots of them would want to do mathematics next year, won't yeah. they? All right, so where do we begin? Let's look at the paper difficulty. So we're going to look at the foundation and the higher paper and briefly go over how, as a student, um, may, may have felt with these papers. Okay, so what did you think, sir? Compared to paper two, um, I would say, I mean, I spoke to a lot of my students, they said they actually found paper three easier than paper two, mm. but I haven't looked at it. Uh, Funny you say that, I had some students coming out um, saying that paper two was easier than paper three. But, um, and you had students saying that paper three was easier than paper two. Exactly, so, but when I have a look at the paper, I actually agree with what your students yeah, were saying. Yeah, I mean, um, what we can agree on though, is that paper one was very, was not very high. nice, but not very nice, yeah? yeah? Well, that's for sure. So some students are, have found paper two easier than paper three and vice versa, okay? So, I mean, I was looking for the paper and I have to say, I agree with the students that said paper two was easier. I guess it also comes down to what topics they revise more on. So maybe they revise these topics a lot more mm. and focus more on these ones. They just found it better than paper two. And that's, mm. and that's any, any particular questions that... I mean, I, I noted question 15, the circle geometry one. That, I mean, a lot of students will look at that. And I'm talking about middle ability kids yeah. here, by the way. A lot of students will look at that and not know where to start uh, because simply because of the application of the circle theorems to this sort yeah, of question. Yeah, because it's, it's just applying algebra to show that angles are equal. That's right. right. So that's not usually... Some, they, they need, not, some, uh, they need they to need start to with an out, angle. They need an angle, a num numerical angle mm. given to, uh, to apply circle theorems. So let me know what you guys thought about question 15. Um, how, how, you know, you, you, you would have approached that question. Um, we'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, any other questions that you thought would have been tricky? The, the, the histogram, the second part of the oh, histogram. The se I was going to say that, the second part. Which number was that? Uh, that was number 17, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so number 17 with the histograms. The first uh, part is straightforward. That's just, straightforward. And three marks. But yeah. the last, those two marks... A lot. Yeah. It's only two marks, but I guess it's a great decider for the for the top uh, for students. the top nets. Yeah. yeah, for the top um, nets. Yeah. But giving it as an expression in terms of n, I mean, you can just count the squares and you can work it out. But mm. I mean, but an expression most, leaving an algebraic expression. Yeah, it's just most of the time you're given the actual number for that, and then you can work figure out yeah. the frequency density. So I mean, um, that might be two marks that a lot of people would just sort of yield, like give up mm. on on that one. Any other particular one? The, question the, 18 was another interesting one. Question 18, I would say, it's a nice question. I mean, it looks, you know, actually it looks fun. Just, just a reminder, question 18 yeah. was the prism, the 3D, 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 3
those papers, predicted papers for the hire together and the foundation. No, we don't. The all credit for that, guys, goes to Maths Genie. Uh, we got the papers from there and we do our own solutions and method to that. So give credit to that. Just in case any of you are thinking that we create the papers, we don't, okay? That's Maths Genie and uh, Maths Watch and, and we Frost. get from, and Dr. Frost. Yeah, that's where we get the various things from. So kudos to those guys. They get full credit for that, okay? So going back to this. Um, that question 18. Yeah. It's an approach, isn't it? Like how they may, because you know, it was a little bit more advanced. Yeah. So is that, are we saying about the number five marks? So we've got seven marks in total, plus that question 15. Uh, what's that, three marks? So how many did we add just now? So five, uh, seven, and then three. So 10 marks so far that a lot of students may have struggled to attain. Right. Yeah, a few more. And a few more? You've got a few more? Uh, I question. thought the rest of it was... You know, what's an interesting one? You know the last question? Yeah. The simultaneous uh, question with the linear and the quadratic. A lot of them would be used to... Because the simultaneous equation hasn't come up yet on the higher. Um, you know, usually where you're just multiplying uh, one equation to get the same coefficient. This was a linear and a quadratic, and it was the hardest form of simultaneous. Um, uh, questions. You know what, I had one of my students come at the, on the morning of the exam and randomly ask about this. In fact, I didn't teach her, someone else did. And I just quickly it, showed it to her. It was on the advanced information. It, it was. said simultaneous slash quadratics, but... We didn't know if there were... I kind of knew, I kind of had a good, you know, I kind of felt like it has yeah. to be the quadratic so I do because feel they had sim the linear one in the foundation paper, but they avoided it in the higher paper, yeah. so... yeah. I do kind of feel sorry for the students that would have just... Um, you know, gone over the simultaneous equations where you just, you know, only, only thing is, match up the only variables. thing is, it doesn't say solve them simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So the advanced kid will know they, you know, they have to solve it simultaneously. But for someone, you know, middle ability, they yes. might think, hang on, is, is this two well, different? What, what, what am I supposed to do here? Mm -hmm. I've got two equations. So accessing that finding question, point of intersection. Mm -hmm. Do I need to draw a graph to see where they yeah, intersect? They yeah. might. Start doing that. So, so um, I mean, these are some of the reasons that would have made this paper quite tricky, isn't it, for yeah. some students? Yeah. Now, there was a question that I know a lot of you, despite all the questions that we've talked about so far, that a lot of you may be talking about. And that is question 21. 21. Yeah, the probability one. When we looked at that, we were struggling a little bit at first. Yeah, we're not going to lie. We were struggling at first. So, that was a question that also we need to add to. The that 10 is, marks that we yeah. said, yeah, four marks. It's so, four marks. yeah, let us know if you thought that question was tricky for you as well. Let's go on to grade boundaries now. Oh, sorry, foundation before. Foundation, now I, I asked a, a teacher of foundation who teaches, and they said for their students, the foundation paper may be quite difficult. Yeah, I mean, if you look at some of the last few questions of the foundation yeah, that's, paper, that's in they're, the in the higher, they're in the higher, they're in the higher. Yeah, the last few, I think from question 22 onwards, when that higher, was in the higher. In the higher one. But the issue here is, I mean, there's easy questions on the foundation paper, but it's the percentage or the number of marks you need to pass. Um, and this is us moving on to the grade boundaries. In 2019, now what the government did say, by the way, is that they will come to a middle ground with the grade boundaries. And I will explain this in another video. Uh, in more detail, but very briefly, they said that um, the grade boundaries would be a somewhere in the middle between the 2019, which is when the last time exams were done, and the lockdown, okay? So in 2019, to get grade five on the foundation paper, you needed 166 marks. Okay. In lockdown, you know, the um, autumn papers that they did, you still needed 166 marks. That's roughly, the right. foundation didn't change on grade five. That's 69%. If the government say in between, there is nothing in between that. It's still 166. Yeah. But it did change on the grade four. On grade, um, grade, grade four in 2019, you needed 142 marks. In the lockdown exam in 2021, when they did in autumn, um, you needed 134. So, you know, between 142 to 134, a mark in between there, let's say 138, okay, for argument's sake. That's what you'd need to get a grade for on the foundation. Now, that's around 54% or something like that. Okay, I haven't worked it out. That's quite a lot of marks to attain for a grade four on this foundation paper for a foundation ability people. So that's one of the reasons that might be quite difficult. Mm. Yeah. However, when you move over to the higher paper, a lot of you have been asking, you know, would I, if I get this many marks, would I get grade, um, you know, eight or five or whatever? Let me just quickly read out some of the um, scores from 2019 for you guys. So in 2019, you needed 
Um, roughly 84%, which was 197 marks out of 240 to get a grade nine. So around 80, sorry, 82%, yeah? In 2021 lockdown, you needed around 78%. So we could say like as a middle ground, 80%. You need around 80% of the marks to get a grade nine. Okay, that's what they meant by middle ground. So around 80%. Whereas grade five, um, in 2019, you needed 30% on the paper to get a grade five, 73 marks out of uh, 240. And in 2021, you needed 27%, which was around 65 marks out of 240. So that means, what are we saying here? Around 28, 28, 29%, 29, 29%, 28%? It's more that, or less this. Yeah, that's quite gap. good. Three, yeah, three that's gap, quite good. Yeah, so. there's not much there to do. So you need around 28, 29% to get that grade five on the higher. Yeah, I, think, I think the lower end, they haven't really given much of a dis no, discount. If you yeah, they have that. not much of a discount. <laughs> I mean, so in 2019, you needed 18% yeah. uh, to get a grade four on the higher. And in 2021, it was 15%. It's just the higher so in the is, middle, yeah. 16, 17% maybe. Okay, so these are some of the... Um, um, marks that you should be looking, aiming to get. Lots of year 11s would want to look to do A-level maths next year. Yeah. All right. So what can we say that they need to be ready for? It's the it's it's, it's the algebra skill. It's um so number number skills. Obviously, they've developed over the years in school um in lo lower school. Um, now, it's the algebra skills that you have studied in GCSE maths. You're gonna have to really excel on those on those on those skills build up on those skills as much as as, as you can yeah so what kind of topics so, are they so you'll be looking at solving equations so with simultaneous equations quadratics lots of quadratic completing yeah, the square factorizing quadratics completing the square solving quadratic inequalities mm -hmm. you're looking at um graph a lot of graph yeah, work. lots of graph work, the straight line graphs perpendicular parallel yeah. so they, you're going to hit the ground running yeah so lots of stuff that you've done in gcse you're going to see a lot of gcse content but what's the difference at a s level the difference is, I would say, is that it's, it's non-stop algebra. Non -stop algebra. You're gonna, we're not going to have much of a you know, break in, in terms of algebra skills that need to be... So algebra like. skills are a must. You better make sure that you are spending your summer, not all of it, obviously, get some rest, but going over lots and lots of algebra, okay? I have the, the content. It might be worthwhile, uh, you know, going and seeing the scheme of work. Or the, or, or the syllabus for AS Maths and see those first, just work on those first three chapters because you'll find that there's a lot of similarities with GCSE uh, in those first three chapters. But you've got to make sure that, you, you remember, you're working at an advanced level for those topics, all right, for simultaneous equations at the advanced level. So you know that question 22 where you had the quadratic and uh, the, the, the linear simultaneous equation? Yeah. This is something that's, a, so, you know, it's taken for granted, that skill. But Isn't it? The thing is, when, uh, yes. but when, when it comes to fractions and like you have to substitute, rearrange your fraction, then that's where people make a lot of mistakes. That's so it's, it's those skills that you want to really mean, find out yeah. and make sure you yeah. come better at those so, ones. So that's how you need to prepare for AS. Uh, do check out, we have a playlist for AS topics and we'll be adding to more of that. We'll be uh, you know, upgrading it with better lessons and uh, you know, you know, more questions uh, so to help and support you over the summer holiday period. But that's how you need to be preparing for your AS if you're someone who is going to be doing A-level maths next year. Once again, guys, congratulations for getting this far. You have done so well to get here. And I just want to wish you guys, you know, a fantastic and restful summer holiday. Make sure you get plenty of rest. You deserve it. Those of you who are doing the A-level maths, obviously you need to prepare. So put a few weeks aside to do that. Um, but yeah, you know, enjoy your summer. Anything you want to say, sir? No, I'm just saying it makes the most of the break and you guys have an extended break now compared to the rest of us. So it makes the most of it. Yeah, and relax and get refreshed for, for next year. Salute you one more time, guys. Yeah, bye-bye.